Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky, and you're listening to Live Without Limits. Today's show, we're going to be talking about four ways to build your email list on Facebook with no ads. You can't wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club, said Jack London. Facebook marketing is one of the easiest paths to building your email list for engaged subscribers. Why? Because no matter who your ideal clients are, they like using Facebook. And in this show, what we're going to do is talk about the four ways to build your email list with Facebook without running a single Facebook ad. And then we're going to talk about how to use autoresponders because an with an autoresponder, you can literally set up emails to go out every day for a month to your prospects and to your customers that you connect with through Facebook. The importance of building an email list. Your email list is the lifeblood of your business. With email, you can keep in contact with previous clients, promote your new products and services, and fill your events by marketing directly to people who are already interested in what you're selling. By building and nurturing your list consistently, you will never struggle to get new clients, book your services, or fill your programs. And here's the thing about how to use your autoresponder that truly makes it work. Always remember, it's not about the sales letter. It's about building relationships with your customers and your prospects. And you do this by giving them information that can help them. Because when you give, and the more you give, the more chance you have to develop that relationship with them. And when you develop that relationship with them, it's like going to a friend and talking to them about something that you believe in and they will listen. And then you can send them a sales letter. Plus, email marketing can be incredibly cost-effective, especially if you know how to build your email list without spending a fortune on Facebook ads. Email marketing gives you a 3,800% return on investment, which means you receive $38 in sales for every $1 that you spend on it. Where to look for new subscribers on Facebook? Your Facebook fan page. If you have a business fan page on Facebook, ask your followers to join your email list. In exchange for signing up, offer them a free resource, such as a checklist, workbook, or a free email course. What you're doing is you're literally offering them something for free for their name and email address. Another thing to look at it as is an opt-in page. What is the importance of an opt-in page? Very simple. It's to gather names and emails. And once you have the name in the email, the money's in the list. All you have to do is nurture it and build that relationship. And remember, Just because you send them one email doesn't mean you've built a relationship. You have to be consistent 
and you have to be willing to give. If you're not a giver and only a taker, then you're not going to be able to do and get what it is that you want. So your Facebook fan page is what we've been talking about and how to use it. And Facebook groups, if you have your own Facebook group, create a post asking your group members to join your email list. You don't have your own Facebook group, you can look for potential subscribers in other people's Facebook groups. Now, here's the kicker there. Be sure to read the rules and guidelines and follow them when you're in someone else's group because if you don't, it's easy to be kicked out of those groups. And two, remember, if you are posting things and Facebook considers it spam, you can be put in what's known as Facebook jail, where you can't post anything for a month or more. Um, at least it starts out with 21 days. If you have your own Facebook group, always remember to create a post where you can ask group members to join your email list. Now, here's the thing. Start by joining three to five Facebook groups in your niche. For example, if you're a health coach for busy moms, look for free mom groups that you can join. Make sure to check the group's rules before asking people to join your email list. Some groups don't allow self-promotion, while Others limit it to dedicated weekly quick promo threads. This is why it's so important for you to read the rules on Facebook. And remember, Facebook has a billion people on it. When you think about when it got started, where it was, how far it's come, it's become one of the best social media platforms. But here's also one thing to remember. The reason you want to join groups of like-minded people, because Facebook is made up of people who are this, who are there simply to socialize. And they're not really looking for something to get involved with. But if you develop a relationship, if you find something that you can relate to, and here's the thing, when you are asking people that you meet in groups to become a friend and you message them, you want to find something in what they do that you can connect to that's similar to something that you've already been through or are going through so that you have something that you can connect on and start developing that conversation with them. The worst thing you can do when you are dealing with people on Facebook is to start pushing your program on them because that's the quickest way to turn them off. Your personal Facebook account. Last but not least, you may be able to leverage your personal Facebook account to add a few additional subscribers to your list. If you see a Facebook friend struggling with a problem that your business can solve, feel free to send them a message. If you respond positively, then you can advance the conversation and ask them to join your list. You can also post a request on your personal Facebook profile asking people to join your email list. Remember, and we're going to reiterate this several times, there's money in the email list if you know how to use it properly. 
four ways of building an email list with Facebook without ads. Engage your followers. Engagement equals conversation. If you don't engage then you're with your followers, then you can't expect them to sign up for your email list or purchase your paid offers. Your own Facebook group is the absolute best place to engage with potential subscribers on Facebook. It gives you a space to have regular two-way conversations with your ideal clients. In order to increase engagement, provide value without expectations. Support your group members on their journey. Talk about things that might interest them and ask insightful questions to get the conversation going. If you do this consistently, they will be more receptive to joining your email list when you ask. Here's the kicker that we don't always realize. When you're in school and you're young, how do you get to know other kids? By starting a conversation with them, by playing with them, by having something in common with them. But if it all is in, give, and take, and always remember this, if you are a giver, if you see an opportunity to help someone, then you are developing a relationship with them, and often they will be more likely and receptive to hearing what you say simply because you have shown that you care about them and you want to help them. Position yourself as a trusted expert. You want people to subscribe to your email list? They need to understand the value they will receive. When you position yourself as a trusted expert, whether on your page, in your group, or your personal profile, people will want to hear more from you and feel more inclined to join your list. To position yourself as an expert quickly, pick a narrow niche to focus on, then start engaging as an expert on that topic. For example, by answering questions in other people's Facebook groups, share information, provide helpful tips, and ask questions that other people may not have thought of themselves. Once you've established your expertise, ask people to join your list so they can receive even more helpful tips and free advice from you. I think this is the biggest thing that people don't always think about and don't always realize, that it's all in developing the relationship. And when you narrow down to a specific niche, remember this, you can't be everything to everyone. The problem is that for so many of us, we're looking for ways to build a business, but we don't realize how and think about working online in the same way that you work offline because it's all in the networking and how you relate to people. For one thing, it has nothing to do with how and what you gain because, and this is the thing, and I'm going to go back and tell a story that I've worked with someone that puts together business plans. And he had a client that came to him that wanted a business plan. Now, what she did was she sold the paraphernalia to people who used marijuana. And she was selling it out of her garage 
Well, the best way that she could have built her business from that position is to look at it this way. Set up a website and post articles about how to use the paraphernalia and also look for people who were homebound who used medical marijuana and couldn't get out to get the paraphernalia or the little pipes or the, the little odds and ends they needed to get their medication. And then why not take that and incorporate that into how you market your business and your product. And you can this way set up a mail order or a, a drop ship where you have other people helping you sell your products, whether it be an affiliate program or whether it be as a reseller. There are opportunities for you to do this to grow your business, but don't look at everyone and anyone as a prospect just because there are thousands and thousands of people who already have some place that they purchase these items from because what makes you different and how are you going to reach them so that they know that you're there? And if you're already working out of a garage, think about it this way. When Steve Jobs and Wozniak started Apple, even Dell Computers, when they started, where did they work out of their garage? And they built the first computer. They built the first com compact computer or desktop that allowed more people to have access to computers in the home. And think about it. How has the industry changed that now when you purchase your little iPhone or Android phone, that's your little mini computer that you can literally go on and visit Facebook because Facebook has an app that you can go on. So that what that means is you are creating an opportunity to build a relationship even when you travel. So that, it, and by having a website, your website is open 24 7. So even when you're sleeping, you can be making money. Create a community that grows itself. One of the best reasons to have a Facebook group is a community that grows itself in your email list as a result. Create a Facebook group that's open to anyone who could be a potential client. Center it around their interests, not your business, and watch it grow on its own. Keep in mind that people who join your group won't always know that you have an email list as well to make sure that you get as many subscribers as possible. When someone joins your group, send them a message asking them to join your list. And make sure that they know that you are doing this to build a relationship. And we're now in a time of a pandemic. And we've been talking about Facebook ads and the importance of using Facebook to generate your leads without advertising. So we, what have we been talking about? Having your Facebook group, interacting with people, building that relationship. I happen to be involved with a company that's called My Lead System Pro. And one of the best things that they do is they teach you how to build a relationship with people on Facebook, how to create that one-on-one that -on -one relationship, how to find 
that one, one or two things that connect you so that you can talk to each other and develop that relationship with them. That is where and how to build your email list. And also remember that Facebook can be a very lucrative place to make connections just simply because the people on Facebook are there to socialize. Also, they're there to learn something. And if you have an opportunity to teach someone something, to help them grow in some way, whether it's personally or professionally, then take it. We now live in the digital economy, which means that people learn and get their information digitally, whether it's through podcasts like this, whether it's through articles or blogs that you write, or even through information that you can give them in almost any fashion, like using your email to and autoresponders to connect with the people that you interact with on a regular basis. So look at it as networking. And what do we mean by networking? We mean that you have learned or found a way to connect with someone online. And here's the thing, that if you find something that you all have in common, why not set up a Zoom meeting of a group of people where you can talk, you can talk and, and put out there your ideas or your feelings on something that's going on and be a support group to each other. Sometimes we don't actually understand how we can utilize what's already there to create and manage the things that we can do that can truly help us to grow and build a business on a regular basis. So always be aware of the things that you need to do and how you can utilize what's on Facebook and challenge yourself to build that relationship. One of Facebook challenges. Facebook challenges are my favorite way of attracting email subscribers, Facebook group members, and clients to my business, all at the same time. A Facebook challenge could be attract hundreds of new email subscribers in just five short days. When someone joins your challenge, send them a message inviting them to join your list as well. So what we've been doing is talking about some avenues that you can do and utilize on a regular basis. But it's always your understanding that you need to understand how to incorporate your business into what you're doing today, tomorrow, in the future. And always be aware of how you as an individual can take your business to the next level and build your email list by incorporating and utilizing relationships on Facebook. And as we talked about, you can do it by setting up your own Facebook fan pages, by having your own Facebook groups, by joining other groups of some that are in your niche where you can find like-minded people and create some opportunities for yourself. Build those relationships. And what I want to talk about for the last few minutes of this show it is that we've been talking about Facebook and how to build your, your list and your connection. Well, one of the last things that we're going to talk about is 
developing those relationships and how to give. Because remember, it's W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? Because this is the question that everyone will ask. And make sure that you are looking at utilizing your email address or your autoresponder effectively. So always give a, a minimum of three to one to a maximum of five to one where you are sending them two emails where they are getting information they can benefit from before you send them that sales letter. But I often prefer to make it a four to one or a five to one just simply because I want them to get to that point where they're going to be looking for my email every day. And then when they see my email, they will immediately open it up first before they open up anything else. Therefore, to create that message for them. And here's the thing. Be a good copywriter when you are writing your emails. Make sure that everything flows from one sentence to the other sentence and that it's precise. And, and here's the thing, write at the level of a fifth grader. That way you can make sure that you're not talking above the level of your prospect and they understand exactly what it is that you're offering. Too many times I've gotten emails that really didn't say a lot, but I would click over just to see what it was. And their page, their opt-in page, or their sales page, their bridge page, whatever term you want to use, did not give me as good information. And often if I didn't really understand what it was and I purchased something, then I would almost immediately have to ask for a refund because I, once I, I actually joined the site, I realized that they were not giving me what they told me they were giving me, that what they were doing was enticing me to give them money for the initial program, but then on the back end, they were looking to upsell you for all the things that they were literally telling you they were going to give you. So... Be sure that you know exactly what it is that they're offering up front. And that's why it's important that you are a good copywriter and you know how to, to put out emails that people will want to read. Because half the time, and I'm going to go back to something that I've gotten from an email that's a company called Early to Rise, and it was initially founded by someone who sent out a newsletter daily with articles, and then he sold it, and the person he sold it to was following through with what he did, but with each year, he literally slowly started changing it to where now He's not giving you any information. He's just sending out emails that are, are nothing but promoting his programs. And I have found that less and less am I reading anything or even showing any interest in wanting having to do with anything that he has to do. And at this point, I'm ready to cancel out all of my subscription to him because I do not want to get information from someone that's simply nothing more than a sales letter in that email just because it's coming under the guise of the company that he purchased, and I was assuming it was something that I would benefit from. And remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one personal careercoach.com and you can sign up for coaching or you can take the opportunity to see what we have to offer that can help you build your business 
long-term 